Hello and welcome to another exam paper walkthrough. Uh, today we're going in a different direction. I'm breaking the habit of uh, only looking at uh, Edexcel and I'm doing an AQA paper. Um, so uh, the specifics of that is uh, I'm looking at the June 18 uh, paper 2F and I'm going to be looking at um, the even questions from that paper only. So I've broken this uh, June 18 2F into two papers, an even and an odd questions uh, for my current year 11s. Um, here's a copy of the paper. Uh, uh, attached to the description to this video, you will find a link to a Google Drive that will take you to this paper. Um, I would recommend uh, either doing the paper before the video uh, or doing it alongside. Uh, I'd recommend having some music on in the background. I always have some music on in my ear pod while I'm recording the video. Um, and I hope you find this useful. If you do, uh, please do subscribe. Right, uh, before I actually get into the paper, I just want to bring your attention to this. Uh, this is a breakdown of the paper. Uh, so, uh, obviously, I've just taken the even questions out. Uh, this gives you an indication. Uh, so, the maximum mark for this paper is 36. And then nationally, uh, the data from this year that this has sat uh, puts roughly, to get a grade 5 on this paper, you need about 26 marks, uh, just a useful uh, for you to look at while you're doing it. Uh, the chapter index will be linked to the topics uh, if you want to do any additional revision. Uh, but this just gives you some rough idea of grade boundaries, um, which may be beneficial to you. Uh, before we really get into the paper, I'm going to be using um, an FX991EX uh, emulator today. Um, I'm going to try and switch up the calculators that I use, um, just because I'm getting used to um, the newer models. Um, uh, so I'll be using that for any calculator questions. Uh, I'll talk you through anything that uh, appears differently to uh, any of the previous versions of a calculator. And I can bring that up on a, a web emulator. I've just got a nice emulator for this one there. Right, let's crack on. Okay, uh, question two. Uh, circle the decimal that is greater than um, uh, three-tenths and less than two-fifths. Um, so the way I would do this is I would uh, write down the decimal version of uh, three-tenths and two-fifths. I uh, can use my calculator for that if I wanted to, uh, but I know that three-tenths is going to be 0 0.3, so I'm looking for um, a value that is uh, greater than... Uh, 0.3 but less than uh, two fifths is going to be 0.4. Uh, so the value that would fit that would be uh, this one here. Uh, obviously, this is smaller, this is equal, and this is uh, smaller than uh, 0.3. So that's the one I'm after. Okay, question four. Um, Circle the order of rotational symmetry of the following drawing. Uh, so order of rotational symmetry, uh, I would probably say uh, trace paper might be useful for this one. Uh, in effect, if you trace the shape, uh, place a pinpoint, slap that in the center and rotate it, it's how many times it would overlap itself. Um, I can't do that particularly well here, um, but I'm, I'm fairly confident that uh, if I span it around, it would overlap itself once, tw twice, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times. So I'm gonna go eight. Okay, question six. Uh, Gemma has four groups of friends on social on a social media site. Uh, the table shows the number of friends in each group. So we've got uh, family, netball, school, and guides. Uh, which group is uh, which group is the mode? Um, so the mode is defined by the one that has the greatest frequency. Uh, so that would be school. So school would be the mode. Um, part B, Gemma wants a pictogram to show this information. Uh, she has drawn the first two rows. Complete the pictogram. Um, so um, the first two circles have got to represent eight people. Uh, that's true for family and netball. So that means that one circle must represent four friends. Right, so school is going to be 26 divided by four. So 26 divided by four uh, is going to be equal to... Uh, 13 over 2, 6.5. So we want, um, just double checking that in my head. I should really get my calculator out. Uh, 24, yeah, that's right. So I want six and a half circles to be drawn. Right, so uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then a half. I'm going to draw as 
a half circle. Um, and then for guides, my total for guides is 11. Uh, so uh, let's do 11 divided by four is gonna be equal to uh, two and three quarters. Two and three quarters, not three and three quarters. Uh, two and three quarters. Uh, so I need two circles, and then I need to try and draw uh, three quarters. Uh, so I'm gonna draw kind of my cutout first of all, and then a circle to try and show three quarters. Okay, uh, question eight. Uh, the numbers one to 12 are put in a grid. Uh, two, four, five, seven, 10, and 12 are shown. Uh, each of the four sides of the grid must add up to 30, uh, 26, complete the grid using the numbers. So we've got some missing numbers. Um, I'm gonna bring a calculator in for ease at this point. Right, so uh, the first one I'm gonna do is this one, uh, which I'm gonna do by saying uh, I wanna do, type into my calculator, 26 minus uh, 12 plus four plus seven. So 26. So 26 minus, and I'll put it in brackets, 12 plus four plus seven, close brackets. So that missing, and I've uh, messed up there. So that's gonna be three. So three is my missing value there. Right, um, so I'm gonna cross three out there as well. So my next one, uh, my next sum is gonna be 26 minus, and this time in my bracket three, plus five plus 10. So I'm just gonna change my bracket. Uh, so three plus five plus 10, and that gives me eight. So eight should go in that box there. And now I'm in a slightly awkward situation, but because I've crossed these numbers out, I can solve it. Uh, so I want, um, these two numbers here are gonna have to sum up to a certain value. So I'm gonna do uh, 26 minus uh, seven plus two, uh, which is gonna become 26 minus nine. So that's gonna be uh, uh, 17. And then only two of the numbers would add up to 17. So this leaves me with a six and even 11 here. Right, which means that I've only got one and nine to go here and here. And um, actually, I don't think it matters which way around those two go, uh, but we'll come to that in a second. Uh, so currently this adds up to, uh, we'll do it again, 26 minus uh, 10 plus 11. Uh, sorry, no. I've just made the assumption that I can go for 11, um, but it, this value here has got to either be a six or an 11. Um, and that's kind of my my uh, issue. So if I just do 26 minus 10 would give me uh, 16. So I need these three numbers to add up to 16 and it's gotta be a one and a nine. Actually, um, so I know that uh, six or an 11 has got to go here, which only leaves me the digits one and nine left. Uh, so that's got to be a six there. So I've got to go six and 11 there. And then the one and the nine, I can't see any reason why I can't put them in either way around. Uh, let me just read the question again, blah, 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 blah. Each of the four sides of the grid must add up to 26. So it doesn't really matter which way around these go. Uh, so I'll go um, one and nine, but those two could be either way around. Right, um, let's move on to our next question then. Uh, which of these numbers has exactly four factors? Circle your answer. So exactly four factors. Um, well, one, uh, four has got the numbers uh, one, two, and four, so that's got three, so it can't be that one. Uh, eight has got one and eight, uh, two and four. Uh, so eight. Uh, we can show the others have got more than four factors, but I, I don't think we need to. Right. Uh, question 12. How many minutes are there in five hours and four, uh, five and a quarter hours? 
uh, circle your answer. Um, so a quarter of an hour is uh, uh, 15 minutes and uh, five hours is going to be five times by 60 plus 15. I uh, could use the time function on my calculator, but it's not really needed for that. So 315, which is our option there. Okay, uh, calculator usage. So uh, use your calculator, write down all the figures on your calculator display. Uh, so 9.95, a square button is there, uh, times by 29.8. There's no need to do it as a separate step uh, on these modern calculators. Uh, so double check that you've typed it incorrectly and press equals. So we're looking at uh, 2950.274. Okay, um, part B, is your answer to part A sensible? Uh, use approximation to decide. So using approximation to decide, uh, we're gonna round these values to one decimal, uh, to one significant figure. Uh, so we're looking to do 10 squared uh, times by uh, 30. So 10 squared is gonna be 100, times by 30 is gonna be 3,000. And uh, 2,950.274. Five is approximately equal to, so to one significant figure, 3,000. So um, is it sensible? Yes, sensible. Because they both are approximately equal. Right. Uh, question 16. Uh, ACD is a straight line. Triangle ABC is an equilateral is, e sorry, triangle ABC is equilateral, ABC is equilateral, uh, work out the size of the angle marked with X. Okay, do we need to show, uh, it doesn't ask for us to give reasons, so if this is an equilateral triangle, uh, that means each of these would be 60 degrees. So uh, we need to work out this angle here, which I'm going to call Y for now. So uh, y is going to be equal to, we've got an isosceles triangle, so um, 180 minus uh, 28 divided by 2, because in theory that would also be y. Uh, so that would be equal to, and um, I'll type it in just like that. I've shown what I'm going to do, divided by 2. And I want to actually go there, uh, minus 28. So that angle there is going to be 76. So x is going to be equal to 180 minus 60 plus 76, which would give me 180 minus, open bracket, 60 plus 76. Good habit, always write down what you're going to type into your calculator. So 44, and there we go. Right, question 16. Amber is working out the size of the interior angle of a regular octagon. Her method is interior angle is equal to 360 divided by 8. Is her method correct? Uh, no. Uh, that would be the size of the exterior angle. The, the method. The method. work out the exterior angle. Uh, or we could correct, she'd need to do 180 minus that to work out the interior angle, um, but that's going to be enough to get us the, the one mark there, I think. Okay, question 18. A shop sells raincoats and umbrellas. The scatter graph shows the monthly sales for 12 months. Sale of raincoats in pounds, number of umbrellas in pounds. Sales, sales. Uh, write down the type of correlation this graph shows. Uh, so that's going to be a positive correlation.
All right. Uh, question 18. The manager expects the sales of umbrellas next month to be 600. Draw a line of best fit to estimate the sale of the raincoat. Uh, so I need to draw a line of best fit here. I'm just looking around the room to find something because uh, unfortunately um, I can't really show a ruler on here, but I'm going to place a ruler to best match the correlation. Okay, so I'm going to say that the correlation is roughly that. So £60. Pounds. Um, the manager expects the sales for umbrellas to be 60 So at 60 I'm going to go up to my line of best fit, and then I'm going to read across. So that's a bit of a wonky line. Let me try and clear that up a little bit. There we go. Slightly better. Uh, so I'm looking roughly halfway between, so I'm going to go... Um, well, they're going up in fives, aren't they? Yeah, so I'm going to say 135. Right, um, I'm just going to bring up the mark scheme and check what the mark scheme says for that. And the mark scheme actually says uh, you get method marks for your, um, sorry, uh, no, you get a B1 mark and an M1 mark for um, B1 for the, uh, line of best fit and M1 for showing these lines and then it says a correct value from their line So whatever line you've drawn uh, picks up that final one. So I'll get all marks Okay, uh, question 20 how many times larger is a than B and we've got our ratio up here uh, So I tend I tend to say uh, I tend to view it like this uh, so uh, a over 5 is going to be equal to uh, B over 2 uh, so if I uh, so a is going to be equal to five over two lots of b, so a is going to be equal to two point five times b, so it is two point five times bigger. Okay, uh, question twenty two. Uh, two ordinary fair dice are rolled. Complete the tree diagram. So our probabilities aren't going to change. So we've got one third here. It'll be two thirds here, two thirds here, one third here, and two thirds here. I really like these questions. Tends to be nice, straightforward one mark. Uh, work out the probability that both dice land on the num on a number less than three. So less than three, less than three. So we've got one third times by one third. Both dice land on a number less than three. Both dice land. Uh, uh, which will give me 1 over 9, and I'd leave it like that. I'm sure we could go decimal, but I'd leave it as 1 over 9. Uh, if we go decimal, 1 ninth is 0 0.1111111 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 reoccurring, so, but I'd leave it as 1 ninth. Okay, uh, question 24. Uh, so the table shows information about the population of a city. Population in 2001, population in 2011. Liam claims from 2011 to 2021, the population of the, of the city will increase by the same percentage as 2001 to 2011. He works out population increase is 60,000, so the population increase would be that plus. Does the population match his claim? Um, no. No, you must show your working. Um, okay, <clears throat> so the population increase between those is going to be equal to, so I'm stating no, um, show you working, so uh, the percentage increase, percentage increase, is going to be equal to, um, 480,000 divided by 420,000. Uh, actually, this will be my decimal. I could say, yeah, we'll say times by 100. No, I'm going to just leave it like this. Um, so in theory, what I'm going to get is a decimal uh, rather than the actual value, but that's okay. Uh, 48123 over... And we don't really need to have all the zeros, but there we go. So we've got a 14% increase, really. Um, so 1.142 uh, uh, dot, 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 show I have not right. 
Uh, so shard not rounded. <coughs> so now if I do uh, 48,000 multiplied by that, uh, it would be equal to, oh, sorry, four times by, and I'm just going to put answer to show that I've just times it by the answer from my calculator. Uh, four hundred five hundred and forty-eight thousand five hundred and seventy-one point four two two dot 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 dot. So um, new population. would be uh, 548,571. And then my answer again is no. Does the population match his claim? No. Okay, uh, question 26. Uh, Thea starts with savings of 18 pounds. Jamie starts with no saving. Each week from now, Theo will save four pounds 50 and James will save four pounds. How many weeks will Theo and James have savings in how many weeks? In how many weeks till Theo and James have savings in the ratio of 15 to eight? Okay, um, so uh, let's just do a little bit of prelims. So Theo's um, total uh, is going to be equal to eighteen pounds plus um, four point five times the number of weeks, and James is just going to be equal to four <coughs> um, n. Right, um, so we want the number of weeks to match this ratio. Um, so if we think about it, uh, I'm going to look at this one first of all. <coughs> um, so in theory, uh, four times the number of weeks. So the first possibility would be four, um, but James's total at that is not going to be... Actually, uh, the first opportunity is two. So in two weeks... Uh, James is going to have eight, and uh, uh, Theo would have uh, 18 plus nine, so would have 27, so that wouldn't work. Uh, next uh, opportunity when that would happen would be uh, eight, uh, 12 uh, in week three, and that's not going to work either. Uh, so if we look at um, uh, we could go 16 uh, that would be week 4 um, and that's not going to work either is it so it's going to be uh, 18 plus 18 is 36 and that won't cancel down um, so I'm next one's not going to work because we'll have a decimal so if we look at 6 weeks uh, six weeks, that would be uh, 24, and uh, Theo would have uh, 18 plus 4.5 <coughs> uh, times 6, so Theo would have 45, and that, there we go, and that one, that ratio would simplify down to 15 to 8, uh, so six weeks. Okay, um, question 28, last question. Uh, the length of each side of a regular pentagon is 8.4 centimeters to one decimal place. Complete the error interval for the length of one side. Uh, let me just reread that. The length of each side of a regular pentagon is 8.4 centimeters to one decimal place. Error interval for that then is gonna be, uh, what well, we've gotta imagine, uh, it's been rounded to 8.4 as opposed to 8.3 or 8.5. So we're looking at 8.35 and 8.45 because that's the middle point of both those bands. Right, complete the error interval for the perimeter. So uh, we're looking at 8.35 times by 8 and 8.45 times by 8. Uh, so uh, 8 times by, just doing this to help me 
plug it in quicker. Three five. So uh, sixty six point eight. And then I'm just going to replay and switch that for a 4. 67.6. And I've just spotted oh, I've gone for an octagon instead of a pentagon. Silly me. So I'm just going to change these numbers around a little bit. That should have been times by 5, not times by 8. Hopefully you spotted that. Right. So 42.25, and then change that to a 3. 41.75. <coughs> okay, and uh, so that's the end of the paper. I hope you found that useful. Um, again, uh, if you struggled with any of the questions in particular, um, and you want to do some independent revision on that, those are the topics areas uh, it's also going to be the chapter titles uh, for this video and again um, bear in mind uh, the marks for this paper um, uh, those are approximate marks um, based on uh, legacy data um, hope you found that useful um, again um, thank you very much for watching and taking the time to do this uh, please remember uh, subscribe if you like